Welcome into to Drew Saley Diamond for Monday, November 4th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. College football opening line edition. This is the third time we're doing it, guys. So let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree with some of these line move projections. Got some big games, got some trends in college football I'm, I'm looking to point out to you. I think are important for finding more winners than losers. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree. Smash that like button if you're liking the content, guys. It helps out the algorithm as we got first game up before we hit some of these trends. Eight on ABC, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Austin, Texas. It's the Florida Gators and the Texas Longhorns. We're seeing Texas minus three touchdowns here, minus 21 and a hook, actually, and 48 being the total. Florida comes in four and four on the season, Texas seven and one. However, there's some other things to go over here because this is a very interesting profile of bet that, you know, sidewise, I think it's going to be tough to project this number because we get the Gators coming in. Yes, just 500 on the season, but they've now covered five straight games. We actually broke them down on last week's show as well, and they've covered those games by almost 60 against the sp against the spread points. They did come in within the number by a hook against the uh, Georgia Bulldogs. But even more importantly, their quarterback, DJ Lagway, went out with a hamstring injury. He was on crutches, did not look good. It does not, I'm not a doctor by any means, but it does not look like he's going to be playing in this game. Um, they had their third string quarterback come in, a Yale transfer, and really their offense shut down. They ended up losing the game. They did stay within the number. However, defensively, we got to bring it up with this Gators side. They've held three of their last four op opponents to – under 20 points in regulate in regulation. The only one was the Georgia Bulldogs, which they couldn't do much offensively. So keeping the ball away from them wasn't something they were able to do. And before that, it was Kentucky, Tennessee, and UCF. You know, offenses that that have had success outside of Kentucky. Now, comparing that to Texas, Texas seven and one on the season. However, laying three touchdowns here with this Longhorns team that's now one in three against the number in SEC play by minus almost 40 against the spread points, that becomes a question mark in itself. Um, I do think Texas win this, wins this game. I don't think Florida is going to be able to turn it around with a third string quarterback that quickly. However, guys, I think they still continue their good defensive play, and I think I don't think this game gets into the 50s. I don't think Florida scores much at all. And I don't think Texas is able to kind of run up the score on Florida either. Texas has also had four straight unders, guys. So we're going to ride that trend. We're going to go under 48. So I think that this number moves, you know, 47, 46 and a half by kickoff, guys. I don't think we get much over money here. So uh, Florida, Texas, the line projection is towards the under. We'll move to Atlanta, Georgia up next, also 12 noon Eastern. This is on ESPN. It looks like rain in the forecast in the ATL. It's the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and the Miami Hurricanes. We get the Canes minus 11-point road favorites, total of 63. Really, the story here is Miami's 9-0. and they're, they're just 5-4 and four against the spread, so covering big numbers hasn't really been the, the kind of profile that the U is – has been on. However, they've been big time over cashers. They just hit the over by over 30 points against the closing spread against Duke. They're eight and one to the over on the season. Now they're up against the Georgia Tech team that is off of a bye week. However, I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, we've seen Cam Cam Ward and this Miami Hurricanes team just score on everybody. Now, Georgia Tech is two and seven to the under, but their quarterback, Haynes King, he hasn't played the last three weeks, and it's really showed in their offense. He's a guy with over 70% completion, 8-1 to one touchdown to interception ratio. He's rushed for over 350 yards as well. I think Miami carries this game. I really do, guys. I mean, totals betting is more about, uh, you know, the more talented team. And I think Miami runs it up, and I think – that this Miami defense is to be had. I think Georgia Tech can score on them as well. Off of the bye week, I wouldn't be surprised if Haynes King gets back out there. Now, a side note here, this is the Mario Cristobal game, quote unquote, from last year. You might remember Miami could have uh, just kneeled the ball and won the game. However, they decided to run offensive plays, fumbled, and Haynes King and Georgia Tech uh, threw a long touchdown and won the game. So that was one of the wilder games last season. So, hey, just a year later, 
we're, we're, we're going to likely see over money. Now, rain in the forecast might change things. But um, as of right now, guys, 63, I think that uh, we get more over money before kickoff. We'll head down the list, 330 Eastern on ABC, the second SEC matchup and a huge one here in Oxford, Mississippi. It's the Georgia Bulldogs and the Mississippi Rebels, Old Miss, that is. Minus two and a hook, that's Georgia as the road favorite, 55 being the total. Georgia comes in seven and one on the season, Old Miss seven and two. Now, there does look like rain in the forecast here in a lot of these uh, games in the Southeast on Saturday, guys, by the way. So uh, this is another one. Now, last week, Mississippi won 63 to 31 over Arkansas. But before that, they were having all kinds of problems offensively. This wasn't the same offense we saw under Lane Kiffin against non-SEC opponents. When they got into SEC play, it really bogged down. They weren't able to do as much. Now, how much is that Arkansas maybe being a little overrated? And how much is that Mississippi finding it offensively? Well, that remains to be seen. But against Georgia, I think they're going to have a tough time. Ole Miss is. And, I mean, the Bulldogs come in with a unique profile themselves. They're, they're what, 7-1 and one on the season, but just 2-6 and six against the spread. You normally don't see that at this stage of the season in college football. A team that's that good straight up, yet not covering numbers. They're also 0-6. This year, their last six is a favorite. Uh, their only cover as a favorite was week one against Clemson. Since then, they've lost all six as the favorite. But in all but one of those, they were laying more than two touchdowns. So this is kind of a different price point, if you will. This is under a field goal. Now, a storyline here as well is Kirby Smart versus Lane Kiffin. You, re you might remember in 2014, 2015, Lane Kiffin was the offensive coordinator at Alabama and Kirby Smart was the defensive coordinator for two years. They were colleagues under Nick Saban. So now they're going up against each other. Kind of an interesting talking point anyway. They obviously know, know each other. And from what I've read, uh, aren't necessarily friends. However, it does look like uh, mostly respectable quotes out the gate anyway. We'll see if that changes. Um, but Georgia's, what, 49-0 and versus all teams not named Alabama? I, I, they've really been able to put, put it together here. Carson Beck has three-plus interceptions his last two touch, his last two games, which is a, a, a big head-scratcher here. But last year, I mean, it was 52-17. to Georgia just routed Mississippi. Granted, that was in Athens. But, guys, I, I think this minus two and a half, we have seen it come down from minus three. I think we get a bounce back, though. I think uh, Georgia takes the money here, minus two and a half. I think this closes three. So we'll go with the line projection towards the Bulldogs over the Old Miss Rebels. Got one game left. Uh, reminder, if you could comment below, it does help out the algorithm. Smash that like button if you're liking the content, guys. Premium picks available, wagertalk.com. Experts page, Drew Martin. Got a 5% max limit up for this week in the NFL. All right, some trends I wanted to throw out, guys. Against the spread, teams to the positive. The Indiana Hoosiers, man, they only have one against the spread loss all year long. They are covering the point spread by an average of 17 against the spread points to the closing line. This Indiana team is for real. BYU only one ATS loss. Minnesota, kind of sleeper there. The Golden Gophers, they're covering numbers. And then the Army Black Knights, which we're going to get into their game as well. They have been a huge money maker. Now, teams against the spread that have been losing cash, Georgia State, Liberty, Air Force, and Arizona, they only have one against the spread win all season long. Arizona just got blown out again by UCF. They're now minus 15 against the spread points against the closing line. Also, totals-wise, always love throwing this one out. Iowa, 8-1 and one to the over. Who would have thought that coming into the season? So this Iowa Hawkeyes team has been uh, – what priced a little bit too short totals wise ball state north texas navy maryland and miami all seven and one to the over as well we talked about the miami hurricanes and liking their over out the gate usually those trends particularly in the totals market uh kind of stay true to form unders teams utah houston and florida state they've only hit one over year to date so they've been pretty much all unders to this point but two teams in those trends that we're now going to talk about is 
Army and North Texas. They both made the top lists in terms of total and side. Army sidewise, they only have one ATS loss all season. And North Texas to the over, eight and one to the over on the year. Um, or seven and one to the over, excuse me. This one's 330 Eastern on ESPN2 AAC matchup. Army at North Texas, 63 being the total, minus five in the hook. That's the Army Black Knights as the road favorite. So I'm talking Monday morning, what about 10 a.m. Pacific time? So we get Army coming in as the five in the hook favorite. They're off of the Air Force game, which they won 20 to three. And the storyline here, their quarterback did not play against Air Force. Daly, he's their leading passer and rusher. You know, he, he had kind of like an outside shot to get in the Heisman Trophy uh, conversation. But their head coach, Jeff Munkin, he did, I did see a quote here. Good chance, quote unquote, he makes the trip to Denton to play in this game. So that's usually promising. They do have a bye week next week before playing Notre Dame, though. So that almost makes me think maybe they rest them one more. But, hey, they're 8-0 out the gate. They need to win these games if they're going to make a push towards uh, that, what, playoff berth even. And they're up against North Texas here. Their quarterback, Morris, this guy's got 2,800 passing yards on the season, 26 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. And North Texas is off of a bye week. Whenever you get a bye week the week before you're playing kind of the option offensive tack, uh, attack, that is a huge advantage just to prepare for those option principles, make sure every defender's on the same page. Well, North Texas gets that here. North Texas has six straight overs by almost 100 points, more than the closing total, meaning they are being way underpriced from, a, from an over perspective. Their defense has not been good either. Let up 35 plus points in five of the last six games. They've let up 27 plus points in six straight. And every game this season, more than 27 points, except one, and that was against the Temple Owls. Um, I think both teams are – I know Tech, North Texas is off of the bye, but I don't think it matters. This defense is not very good, and when you can't stop the option, it's not like you figure it out during the during the game usually. Army themselves is 5-3 and three to the over. Guys, I, I think this is going to get some over money, and this is one of the games in the quote-unquote south that's uh, 70 degrees and sunny projected on Saturday, so – Always keep in mind with weather, you know, I'm talking five, six days before kickoff, so it can change. But I do like to look at it, particularly when betting um, the totals market. I would actually look at this kind of both side and total. I think Army is going to take money. I mean, they're 8-0 no out the gate. They've been a money maker. And North Texas, just trusting this defense against an option attack to stay within, what, one score? I don't think the betting public's going to do that by any means or the sharper betters, if you will. So I think Army is going to take money and I think we're going to get over money here. Good weather in Denton, 63. I don't think that lasts long. I think it gets into the mid 60s, guys. So in recap, like Army sidewise and over money in the Army North Texas game. I like the Georgia Bulldogs in this price point to kind of bounce back from minus two and a half. I think it closes three. Miami and Georgia Tech. That's getting over 63 money, in my opinion, there in Atlanta. And I think Florida and Texas, interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if Texas takes money sidewise just because of the Florida quarterback injury. But even more so, I think we get under money. So under 48 in Florida and Texas. That's going to do it for the college football opening line report. I am Drew Martin. Smash that like button, comment below. I'll be back for Tuesday, breaking down some action. We got action starting. So uh, until then, cash those tickets. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Monday.